best teams in terms of late game decision making, right? So I think generally opposition has this feeling of we got to go. We don't want to go late against Secret. 60 minutes is comfort zone for them. And uh, Secret will actually ban out the Magnus. So the Enchantress that was first banned last time makes it through and gets picked up right away by VP Prodigy. And uh, again, I think it's same side and pick, if I'm not mistaken. Secret on Dire, um, VP Prodigy Radiant, and VP yeah. Prodigy with first pick, which means Secret will have last pick once again. Yeah, Secrets uh, have always been prioritizing Dire. That's uh, at least in the games that we've been casting for them. Yeah. They, they ask for it every time, whereas most teams don't tend to do that. Now they grab Clockwork. Banned in the second phase last match into an immediate faceless void. Now the other way for VP Prodigy. Okay. Here, so it's going to be here. one of those, huh? Yep. I mean, we talked okay. about Void as being this hero who the uh, the core counters aren't really there. It's like there's, there's not a, a position one hero that you go like, oh, okay, yes, I always pick this versus Faceless Void, right? Yep. It's like a game plan style maybe is what uh, you're more into. And as we saw last game, it does seem like a lot of these heroes or abilities that deal with Void and Chrono also get countered by BKB. So Void still has options even if you try to draft around him. Uh, Lone Druid now for Team Secret. Yeah. Now, the last time Virtus Pro Project picked Faceless Void, they banned the Lone Druid um, from Team Secret when they played that first time when we were casting them. So is Secret a step ahead? Do they know that Lone Druid has the favorable matchup versus Void? Well, again, it's just this idea of, I think, the timings, too. I would say that Lone Druid's plans fit pretty well with uh, Faceless Void. Faceless Void doesn't want to be there for some of those earlier tower pushes that Lone Druid can kind of help out with. And then by the time the Void really has items, then the Lone Druid probably has some items, too. Yep. Solid right click, multiple targets, has the fear. And as you mentioned the other zero. day, um, like Lone Druid isn't nearly as greedy as he used to be. We used to see this like Midas Radiance kind of, I need 20 minutes by myself to really get scary. Now we're seeing Mask of Madness, early Desolator, early Basher, these really good fighting items where Lone Druid is, he's coming at you at 10, 15 minutes. I haven't got to see a Lone Druid game a little bit. They played it versus uh, EG last, I think, in Omega League, looks like. Um, Mato uh, ended up taking it mid with the uh, safe lane Nisha Morphling. I guess that's the other good thing about the Lone Druid. It's a flex pick for Secret. Could be safe lane, could be mid. Yeah, Very open-ended, lots. depending on matchup. And Lone Druid uh, wins quite a few matchups in the mid lane. So that already gives you... Uh, a little bit to work with. Venomancer banned out. One of the green heroes that we know Secret have played in the past. Nature's Prophet as well. Yeah, I kind of wonder about this clockwork. I can't really envision a puppy clock. Does not seem like something that comes to my head. I almost It feels like a Yapsor hero. Yeah, that would be my gut. It could also be like... a Zai hero. We've been seeing these three Elder Titans. It could be that three clockwork. We saw it pop up yesterday or the day before. Yeah, I, I think General played it. Um, yes, that was it. General Navi, so yeah. I I would almost see that as more likely than a, a puppy clock. So then again, if the Matu Lone Druid goes like safe lane or something, like Clockwork's probably a pretty good five with a Lone Druid, right? Doesn't need that much help, just a little bit to start. Uh, can rotate around to the mid lane too. So still Options doesn't make it a puppy least. hero, but yeah, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. <laughs> They ban out the Chen as well. Another one of these uh, sort of forgotten about supports. We've seen him come up a couple of times. Something Puppy very much likes. And the Vengeful Spirit is still in. So he could just go back for that. Yeah, he has some pretty good tools versus the Venge Void, a, too. Yeah. I was going to say, good save versus Chrono. That's... Minus armor to help the bear early on. Uh, Bat did sneak through in the last draft to pretty big surprise as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Uh, I thought it might come out at the end, but not going to be there this time. Just getting rid of potential good matchups uh, in the lane. Will Epileptic Kid be able to hit Chronos on par with Matu last game? Uh, that was a pretty good void showing from Matu. He had yeah, like he... one bad Chrono, the one on the solo Magnus that got disrupted, but he had several multi hero, like kind of perfect Chronos right next to the TA. Yeah, it reminded me of last time of when. Uh... They were getting caught, right, with the, uh, the when they had the global silence and Lil was still getting caught inside the black holes and they couldn't cancel or whatever. Yes. Uh, yes. Same kind of an issue where, other than that chrono, I saw several where they managed to delay the chrono long enough that the fight broke down 
Uh, and then it's not like an initiation tool that you're able to space around with. It's like, a, oh, he just caught us in the middle of this part of the engagement and mm -hmm. Lil's stuck in the chrono too. Well, there's your puppy hero, bud. Great Looks against the way, Enchantress. Frostbite, greater than creeps. So uh, good lane option there. And CM with Clockwork, really nice combo. She's got slows and whatnot to set up for Clockwork to close the gap. So they have skill uh, synergy together. And um, of course, the Mana Aura, really nice on Clockwork. Yeah, we don't tend to talk too much about CM heroes anymore uh, with the Aura either, like CM Bristle or like CM Storm Spirit, but doesn't hurt. It's an added bonus. I, I think it's probably more for the Enchantress creep counter than anything. For sure. Yeah. And just good utility. And Bristle just feels kind of bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wasn't his win rate in pubs like abysmal at the beginning of this patch? I don't know if it's gotten any better, but I think he was, it was in one our, of the lowest. He yeah. was in our category of like total dumpsters when we did that uh, review in the podcast. We need to yeah, revisit was... that, see how things have changed. I know anytime I see Bristleback get picked in a pub game, my team groans and goes, ugh. That's a pretty fair reaction, I think. But we'll see. I mean, it can definitely still work in pro games. That, that I believe in. It just feels Nintendo like there's a lot stuff. of other other heroes too is that you can you can go for right bristle very one dimensional vp prodigy thinking about this though enchanter's void still pretty open ended you got your one you got your five i think uh, uh invoker might come out this game too unfortunately they'll probably want to take him near the end and he might get banned out in those last four but yeah. this looks like a nice invoker game for secret already definitely Dark Willow, though. Uh, hero we don't see all too often. I when think I see her, save I think a spammer. Damage. I think save might be a Dark Willow spammer, if I recall. Yeah. I just think damage out of this support. She can solo kill people really without too much uh, farm. You know, pretty low net worth. She just needs a Yules. That's about it. Yeah, he has 285 Dark Willow games in pubs. That, that's quite a few. That's pretty good. That's, that's a hefty chunk. She's not that popular of a hero, so... And there you go, Silencer. We saw VP Prodigy play this against Enigma, like you mentioned a couple minutes ago. Lil played the Silencer, and now Secret are going to pick it up Ooh. into a quick pick Viper for VPP. Did they want to make this Anisha Silencer? Hmm. Mid-core Silencer. Well, I don't think they do anymore. If they did. I think they definitely thought about it. Can you do safe lane silencer if you put lone druid mid? If you did want to go mid silencer, now you don't have the matchup. Is there anything wrong with putting him safe lane if you've got this LD mid? I it's it weird on what your other heroes are. Like, is that going to be worth it? Will be the real question. Yeah. Or this could just be the Zai clockwork, and it's a, a Yapsor silencer. I think that's what's going to happen now. That that will be yeah. my guess. Is I think it might actually be a Yapsor crystal maiden and a puppy silencer. Yeah, okay, or that. But I, either way, key part there, the uh, position three clock. We'll see how VP Prodigy ban. Uh, they will have ninth pick. Again, secret with tenth pick. Lena and Tidehunter now removed. I'm kind of curious who they uh, ban aside from Lena in terms of these mid matchups. Because Lena is the one that I always see people go towards. We used to talk about the Exor and Invoker being a, a counter pick to the Viper mid, but doesn't seem to work nearly as well as it used to. You definitely but don't need to worry the about the heyday of Viper uh, with yeah. the Atos build and the stack in the jungle camps. That was like the only hero that could do it. Arc Warden. I like that ban. Hmm. Talked about him a couple of times. He could have popped out. Uh, they're still brood, but eh. I guess it depends on what VP Prodigy take last. They didn't ban the Nisha Morphling. Do you ban Kunkka here if you're secret? No, Pangolier. Do you think it was really annoying for the bear? The double disarm too. Oh yeah. Hmm. So it would have been a bit weird. Maybe it's just a, a DM hero that he plays a lot, I guess. So they just go for it that way, and yeah, uh, he's gonna okay. bring out the Mars instead. So your classic position three confirms it's gonna be the mid Viper. And that's the Mars Willow combo, right? 
Mm-hmm. It's uh, a pub classic alongside the Mars Phoenix, but Phoenix yep. going to be banned out probably first phase every game this series. Uh, definitely. Phoenix and Wisp, I don't think we will see. And at this rate, probably not Drow either. She's two for two. Hmm. 50 seconds to think about this for secret. What is the play against Viper Trent? That's uh, still a bit of a mystery hero, I think, in a lot of ways. I mean, does Lone Druid win that matchup and they can just take a safe laner? I- I'm not sure how Secret feels about it. Lone Druid versus Viper is not a 1v1 I've seen recently at all. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I mean, it might happen, but I don't think that's like the life that you want to give your Lone Druid. Uh, unless that they really unless feel they- like they need something else. I mean, unless they pick Morphling or something, it's really hard carry for safe lane. No, they pick Pugna. Yeah. So, green better. to counter green. That's going to be Anisha Pugna. That seems pretty good against Viper. I think that's a nice yeah, tool. Just, I think the best way to deal with the Viper mid is to just Whoa. ignore it. Whoa. It's a Zai Silencer, and it's a Yapsor Clockwork. Puppy oh, CM. Okay. So, position three style. Silencer. Yeah. This is some South American Dota. All right. So, tell me about this, buddy. What's, uh, I what's mean, good it's about just, this? Uh, it's, I, well, what's good? <laughs> And the silence is pretty annoying for Faceless Void, right? There's no doubt about that. The constant damage over time in the lane. Uh, we always talk about I, Void loving things that he can time walk to deal with in lane. Yeah. Co- Silencer is like the epitome of damage over time, right? It's damage on the right clicks. It's damage from the curse taking over and over. So you don't get a lot of value over your time walk. Uh, and I guess then you he can does scale walk as well. Too. I mean, as does Clockwork. But in, I guess a better way to frame that question is why put Silencer 3 and Clockwork 4 instead of vice versa. You know, couldn't you do that same thing to counter Void in the lane with a support silencer? I think more so, like, what, like what does Clock want to do? Clock doesn't want to just, like, sit in lane, like, ever. He wants you know? to run around. Yeah, he wants yeah, to go make Yeah, I would mischief. rather just let my Clock go early than my silencer go somewhere early, you know? Okay. Silencer can actually, like, commit to the lane and... Uh, yeah, silencer's a, a pretty shitty value. four. I guess that's maybe just a fair response. He yeah, doesn't I'd rather move have a three well. than four. Like five yeah. is fine because you know I I just have my right, ults or right. whatever. But, okay. I mean, you guys have all played versus the snowballing silencer and pubs. You know what it's like. It's, it starts it's nasty. a couple items. It definitely picks up momentum, and you've got a lone druid pugna, so secret can definitely play a fast mid game. You can take objectives, you win team fights, you can certainly push towers. So, very solid draft. I like what secret has a lot. Prepare for battle. Uh, I think overall, I would rather have the Virtus Pro Prodigy lineup, though. That'll say. The Virtus Pro Prodigy lineup is much more conventional. You took teams out of it, I would probably yes. rather be on the Radiant side. Yep, yeah, I'm with you there. And Shark Willow, that's a pretty deadly support duo. They've got a lot of kill power in these lanes. <laughs> Excited to see this Viper versus Pugna matchup also. I think it's just going to wind up being a kill the creeps matchup, though. But the decreps, Trent. The value. Is that where you're at now? You can only enjoy Dota if there's kills. You can't appreciate the nuance of a skill well, matchup, Trent. It's just there's not a lot of interaction, I don't think. Kind of like some solo lanes, you know? They're both just looking at creeps and barely uh, acknowledging one another. The Viper's going to do his best to, but the Pugna's probably just going to be like, yeah, I don't really want any part of this. So does Pugna have a range advantage? 630 compared to the 575, so a very slight one. Still about uh, 5 to 1 odds here. I will say they both have like decent rotation potential between like the decrep and just even a couple slows from the poison attack, right? Mm-hmm. There is uh, there is potential for it to pop off as Poppy sneaks in, takes that rune right from under DM's nose. He's done this a couple of times, and he has well, the same move. A little more safe though, I guess, because Yapsor did see Lil as well as Save chasing him, so Puppy knew that it wasn't going to be a three on one. He had some intel that he might be able to get away with this. Now, the CM is pretty slow. 280 movement speed. Oh, good battery assault. That saves him, though. Wait up. If there was Spear any actually risk. Stun either. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, absorb TPs. That's fine. No first blood. And three runes secured for Team Secret. Damn bomb. That just has Zai in a bit of a 1v1 at the moment here. Until the inch okay. gets down here. Void versus Silencer. That should be okay for Silencer. 
Check out this mid lane already. Viper and Nisha, or GPK and Nisha, trading some blows. As Lil almost brings down Puppy, but not quite enough damage at level 1. Uh, Matsu probably... How good the Deso build this game? Looks alright. Helps them get like the Roche and stuff. Keep pushing these towers. I don't know. Now it feels like it's uh, Secret who are going to be in the shoes of Redis Pro Project from last game, right? Where they're going to try and get quite a bit done on the earlier end of things. Their, uh, their scaling is not that incredible. They have a lot of cheese, though. Uh, between, like, these silencer damage just kind of stacking up with the, the uh, steals and getting crazy. The life drain onto the bear. Yep. Kind of shenanigans abound here. Absolutely. See Zai laying into Epileptic Kid already. I'm just stealing all that int. That's a pretty stupid void. 200 mana. Also curious what items we'll see Zai go for this game. Maybe like a Force Staff, Hurricane Pike. Yeah, Pike seems really strong this game. Yeah, and I mean it's a core silencer. It's not. <laughs> I don't think it's a whole lot of options. All right, a two-one-two. Two. Nothing unpredictable about these lanes. And yeah, the real no question I'll be looking for uh, is, can they create any kills with this Dark Will and the Mars up top, right? Because this is a kill lane. This is why yeah. people picking in pups. You're trying to set something up, uh, but with the bear, you're always going to be working on this creep manipulation and try and ensure that you're not going to be put in those scenarios. Yapsor does get the cogs on to save. Save's going to be okay, though. Makes it back. Yeah. His courier, on the other hand, might not be so lucky. Yapsor right. finds it. How does this guy do this? Like, he, he always plays around this stupid tree when he is playing four down here, right? And he just knows the times. Yeah, he sits in fog, waits until the courier shows up, and then he just commits. He was doing it with DK. He killed, like, two couriers with position four DK two days ago. Yeah. How? I don't know. Where are you going? A lot of damage now. TP in from the Willow. Epileptic Kid, he'll be pushed back. Yapsor getting low in the tree line. They need some vision, though. Lil not able to hit him with that Shadow Realm extra damage. Now he'll try to TP, but it won't work. First blood for Epileptic Kid. Big That's stuff a good rotation. Because, like, killing the Lone Druid is just so damn hard. You know? Especially at the early levels. I mean, Willow ramps up. She has some cooldown issues, level one. Yeah. And then once the level starts stacking up, though, then Matu's going to have the Savage Roar. And that's like, when we used to see Lone Druid more often, I remember Chen was, like, the only hero that could actually gank him because you could, like, stagger your units and create some sort of, like, stun opportunities. See if they uh, stay committed to this tri lane down here. The other problem with Willow, too, uh, mana early on. She's uh, very dependent on clarities. Totally dry right now with no regen. And they will TP the Enchantress up top. Radiance middle tower and as that happens, attack. Puppy also rotates Isabelle. bottom. So now Secret has a three on two down bottom with the solo Matumba man up top. And that wave is not moving down to Epileptic Kid anytime soon. He's just running to the tree trying to get XP at the moment. Yeah, that's not great. <laughs> Body blocks from Zai too, damn. He's really making life hard down here. He's going to push out again. As yeah, core silence are creating problems. And, and uh, yeah. at the very least, though, again, nothing onto Matu. He's playing it really safe, though. So I mean, look at this damage, though. This is part of the problem with what is now a, a five Willow, basically. She doesn't offer a whole lot against this combo. No kills, but Epileptic Kid and Lil brought dangerously low, and they don't have any salves. Void is out of regen, except for his ring of regen. He's got a salve coming now, okay, and Lil's got three tangos. They're gonna get three bounty runes again, too. Oh, wait, Matsu got the other one. Radiance They're gonna get four. He got four bounty tower. runes. Oh, I thought Save was gonna get the top one in the river. Secret once again, coming out of the gate swinging. Yeah, they pinged it out for Nisha, so he knows it's there for his bottle. As they will finally try and punish Zai. Puppies here, though. They might turn it around. The Void silenced, able to jump back with Arcane Curse. Kong, oh, no. stop Lil's TP, and they're going to get a counter kill the other way. Zion not only lives, but finds himself with a plus two. Ah, oh, it's going to keep Evelyn's kid down at the bottom. Him and DM on the Mars. Not looking too hot gold-wise. Now, gonna mid lane. Just... We haven't talked about it too much, but it looks like it is Pugna favored right now. A Viper behind by about 300 net worth or so. Was leading in CS, but I guess Nisha's been uh, a little better with the regen, a little more efficient. 
Six minute rune, and who's gonna grab it? He's been jungling a lot too on GPK. Ah, there you go. And uh, Nisha also stole some of his jungle camps, so. <laughs> Numerous okay. things not going his way. There you go. Puppy, bashed up by Epileptic Kid, but Frostbite, he does have a time walk. Puppy tries to sidestep it. Nisha has the decrep. Puppy's actually gonna live for a second, but does bait the void into a death. The mid laner. I think we can call that one worth there, uh, as they will grab save up top as well. That'll be uh, Puppy going down, but losing the inch in the face of Void now for Versus Pro Prodigy. That hurts so much though. Like, Void doesn't get the kill on Puppy. He runs all the way to mid lane and then still dies for it. Speaking, Speaking of mid lane, mid, though. Yeah, Nisha gets Viper struck and he's definitely going to fall. Way too much damage. Big rotation. Epileptic Kid actually TP's mid. It's that bottom lane's been so rough that he just wants to get involved in kills. He's level 5. Is he jungling already, I guess? This yeah, is really tough for the versus boy. the silencer, I don't think. Like, once the global's there, then he can never play around really with the time walk, right? In any meaningful way, at the very least. Yeah. Yeah, Zai can always threaten to kill with any plus one. And as long as Zai keeps the lane static here, they can't really gank him. You know, you yeah, think of a core silencer as being super Look vulnerable. at this positioning. He's right next to his tower. Yeah, there's nothing vulnerable about this at all. Yeah. He's got two Wraith bands, by the way, not null tallies. Yeah, this, that is attack the, speed, uh, baby. this is the new strat for sure. Yeah, I like that. Well, Epileptic Kid comes back immediately, starts eating those Doritos. He's just gone. I mean, <laughs> the wave is not moving. This is like the least value safe light I've ever <laughs> seen. Yeah, this is pretty insane. And it's Zai solo. So now the two supports on Secret are able to help mid move around, and it's creating all this commotion that's I mean, also ask, getting a really like, good lane to Matsu up top. This is why it's not clockwork, right? What's happening yes. right now? Yes, 100%. I can totally see it. Feels like just a counter pick against the Void. Now mid, we're going to see save. Level 3 inch evaporate under the Pugna. Now Nisha takes a fight for strikes. First crown. Going to be pushed back, but okay for now. GPK isolated in the cogs next to Yapsor, but light on damage for Secret. Now Zai makes the rotation, still has global. And things will peter out before he's able to really do much. So a little bit of a wasted TP, but not the end of the world. That's a good save from Yapsor. I actually thought he might just die to trade his life to keep Nisha alive there. Having yourself in with a Viper who's uh, double your level doesn't tend to go very well. Right, they're finally going for it. The wave's pushed out. Zai has gone too far forward, but Yapsor's there to back him up as the supports were coming through with the gank. Yapsor, he'll get stunned up, but the cavalry's arrived. There is a Shadow Realm. Lil will get one reset. There it is. Void, time walk back. He's going for the TP. Not even level 6 yet. Meanwhile, Matu, level 8 on this lone druid. Yeah, they were close to getting the roar there to cancel his TP as well. Would have stuck him right into that jungle again, even if they Radiant's didn't get the kill. Under but yeah, both of them going for Mask of Madness and uh, Matu. Oh, actually, Epileptic gets moved off into a, the Midas. Up now, Mars does find a kill on Anisha. Nice arena from DM. Dyer's top tower is Big kill top. there. Radiant's he was just straight up jungling, eh? Fortified. Yeah, he was. He had yep. lost like 300 health Radiant's jungling. Bottom tower is under attack. Yep. Oh, meanwhile, bottom lane, the push continues. Bear makes for an easy tier one tower. Bottom tower Even though that kill on the Pugna is nice, it's the gap between the Dyer's lone druid and the void that's so scary attack. right now. A good 50% 50, uh, 50% edge in favor of Matumba Man. Oh, this uh, commitment top though, if they can get this tower, this would be huge for them because they don't have the arena right now. They're still holding the chrono, but they know they're a little bit behind and Yapsar doesn't have the hook shot yet. It's like their best chance to actually take this. Oh, it's too many There's heroes the though. There's the global though, they're gonna be able to kill Mars. Void still be in, still might be able to get away. No, TP down for 10. Good chrono, does connect onto two, but these arcane curse slows keep resetting. Ah, oh, they're not gonna get him, I don't think. There's reinforcements now, GPK's here. No, Void dies, whoa, stuck in the cogs and evaporates to the Pugna. Now yeah. Viper's gonna get left behind. This is such a disastrous Pretty fight still. for Virtus Pro Prodigy. It's yeah, so I, much damage from the Pugna. He's 4-4-0. Four, four, it's a maxed out decrep. I get it. Like, I understand why they want that tower so bad. Because they're probably not going to get another swing at it. Like, frankly, they know that rotation's coming top. They're going to bring the Lone Druid. They're going to bring the Pugna. This tower's going to go down. And then that the creep wave's going to be, like, living down here the whole time. Right? So they get a little greedy going for it, thinking maybe we can just, like, chrono kill the tower and get out. 
Uh, but they paid a uh, big price for that one. Yeah. Not respecting the Pugna, who now has an Aether Lens also. Uh, Andy's Tranquil Boots. So as you can see, Nisha healing up his buddies. Gets plenty of regen himself. Think you're going to want the mana regen on Pugna, but it turns out Tranquil Boots are pretty damn broken. And I thought Zai might go for the Force Staff at the first of the very least, but currently he just has the straight eggs queued up. Really? That's the uh, curse last word become a, it becomes last or a, a AOE. That's what you get. This oh. has changed a lot, guys. Yes, it has. Well, fight up top belt. Mars Arena comes down. Good fear from the Willow. This is a cool combo. You can see. Stop punching yourself, Poppy. Coming in. That was a perfect display of terrorize into Arena. Don't run off. Fortunately, they're only getting a Crystal Maiden. Uh, well, they might that. still find Nisha. Nisha. GPK's here. He is trying to sustain, but now interrupted. It'll be too much damage. Nice. Uh, that makes it so much more worth it after spending oh, a lot to, to grab that. Got the tier 1 tower mid as that was happening. So, Still nice reverse pro prodigy, but classic secret where they still find something. It's always a trade. Play for reverse pro prodigy, though. Probably... Finding this blink on the DM and see if they can start slowing down uh, Matu, or at least uh, trying to grab kills near towers might be the best case scenario for them right now. Because if you don't start grabbing these towers soon, it feels like you're never going to get any. Yeah. It doesn't feel like Secret have really even pushed that aggressively yet. They've only taken two tier ones. They're still pretty focused on farm. Uh, the Deso is also not that far away from Matu. Uh, Matu. One Mithril Hammer left. Oh, you know what's actually a sick combo is the fact that the last word, when it's AoE, he's going to be hitting multiple heroes, but it also gives you vision over them when you uh, hit them with the curse. So then the Pugna will be able to like start life draining and just like chasing people from a distance, even if they try and fog them. Oh, that is a nice little bonus. Yep, can we finish out uh, maxing the last word now? I don't think I've seen this Agonims on Silencer since it's been changed to this. Seems pretty good though. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, it's, I mean, it Radiant used to be when you, I, well, when I first started playing, it was you would cast Global and it would curse everyone. Uh, and then yeah. they did it with the Glaze, but nice hook shot on the two here from Yapsor. Save in big trouble. The Mars also going down quickly. The Global preventing any kind of counterplay. Puppy with a big ultimate. One TP out. And now the fear on Delil interrupts his fear and keeps Puppy safe. That's a three for nil. Immediate backfire. Another big fight for Secret. Radiant's top tower is under attack. So good at using that Global, too. I love offensive Globals. Just like Radiant's when teams yeah. pick like Batrider and uh, Storm Spirit Dyer's in combination with the Silencer, those kind of plays are uh, so much more beneficial than like trying to cancel uh, some sort of a, a dive or something with oh, it. Oh, Void dying fast. Nice time walk. Regains all the HP. Both sides with some reinforcements, but they'll just back up. He's almost just messing with them there, it felt like. Yeah. Radiant's Way back in the day, wasn't there a point attack. when Silencer's Ags just made Global last longer? Uh, you know, like I was just about to say, I think second. that's actually what it was when I first started. I, I think I'm, you might be right. Because it was notoriously bad. Like, it's already yeah. six seconds. <laughs> yeah, I think that's uh, when I first started playing, that's what it was, and then it got changed into the curse one. Yeah. And then Glaives, and then now this. The Glaives one was a little underwhelming. It's like I think it was the talent, right? Oh, wait, no, he doesn't have that talent anymore. Oh, I forgot. They used to, it made a pure you, spell immunity, I think, right? You could do a whole history class on silencer changes, I'd say. <laughs> Weird fight well, here, though. Virtus Pro Prodigy, they just back up. Thought there might be an initiation angle there for the clockwork, but saves the hook shot. Secret, don't go for it. I must have them all. And Zai, this is like the best hero to play for him. I gotta say, like at least in terms of his mental health, like this Dyer's is, how fun is this game? Attack. You Dyer's just, he's being sent to <laughs> every free lane. That's what, every time that there's a creep wave coming close to a tower, they're like, hey, Zai, could you please go farm that man? Like, I, it's not safe for you up front. You're a silencer. Let Matu <laughs> go in here with his bear. You know, we got to get some serious gold on our, our golden boy carry yeah. here. This is like silencer paradise. Yeah. Usually you're getting picked on. Usually there's people running at you. You feel like this 
this tall version of Zeus that just get, dies when somebody gets on top of you. He's two zero and five. He's got fourteen int. We're all under it's a ward here. If they can't minutes. punish this. This feels awful. They gotta go for something here. This is huge, though. Desolator comes out onto the bear. And the Void's still really light on damage, Strand. He's got this Midas. He's got the Treads. Doesn't yeah, even have the Mask of Madness yet. Probably smokes it out instantly. He's just like, yeah, okay, there's definitely a ward up there. Because hey, they were all sitting there just so clumped. Radiant Missing out on that just feels awful. You have Chrono Radiant and Arena, and you couldn't punch everything. They are going to five-man this mid-tower and at least go for a trade here. Uh, the TPs are here if they want it. And there is a global again. Matu to finish that tower and TP back for the defense. And it might be too dicey into the chrono. Yeah. They do get the tier two. Tier one falls. And we'll see where VP Prodigy go. All right, nice job. So they cleaned up. Uh, GPK got the top tower. Now they get the mid there too. Lil actually taking this tower. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> 500 oh. gold till Silencer Agonims. Well, that's going to help him on his way, huh? The Philosopher's Stone. Right, he dishes it instantly. <laughs> He's going <laughs> to give it to someone who's not hitting creeps the entire time. Yeah, that sounds like a puppy item. Matu has a Moon Shard queued up. Pretty wild. That's all Moon Shard on the bear. This is some uh, game-ending strats here, it feels like. Yeah. How fast are the BKBs going to be here? Not very quickly for the Dyer's Radiant, huh? Is this Agnims is going to be quite brutal. Do they have any Dispel? They don't. Right? I mean, they have a Viper. He's not buying Dispel. Void, he's just going to go straight for the BKB next. Oh, yeah. Dyer's we don't have anything to work with. Going to find DM up here. <laughs> uh, fires, no connection. EM is in deep, but they've got no eyes. The last word AOE is really big, too. The Scepter Radius is 600. Oh, that's it, a I big was AOE. That, actually. Yeah, that's, that's huge. That's a giant AOE. Radius of 600? How is that possible? I feel like I'm misreading that. Scepter Radius 600. That's insane. You're right. That would be like the same as an aura. Yeah, that's all right. It's radius six hundred. What it says could be a bad tooltip. Uh, that's not, uh, uh, that's humongous. That's so. what's on the wiki too. All right. So you basically have two globals. Uh, that's kind of what it comes down to, I guess, huh? I mean, not exactly global, but if it's a clustered up team fight, you could definitely hit two or three heroes with that. Power cogs though. Yapsor takes a cursed crown. No follow-up. This is definitely a game where the missteps can happen, though, right? They're they're playing a rather clumped, like, push into high ground kind of force to go for buildings on the earlier end style versus Arena and Chrono. And versus yep. one AoE spell like that, it can be okay because you can, like, really spread yourselves before that first Chrono or Arena happens. But sometimes the Arena drops, you all kind of crowd around it, trying to, like, decrep from outside or throw in a, you know, one Crystal Nova so that I slow the attack speed to save my ally, he's in there, Dyer's and suddenly Void jumps in and catches attack. the three of you outside trying to help the arena people. Yeah, no, you're totally right. Virtus Pro Prodigy have a draft that has some options. Even though this is looking difficult, they are behind by a good amount. They have the tools. Will they Where make Matu it go? Where is, man? Oh I my know. god, he was god, so close so, to them! They're so scared. <laughs> Virtus Pro Prodigy right now, they're hesitating. They just don't have the intel. I mean, look at their vision. They're pretty blind on the map right now. They've got very defensive wards, so they just don't know. It's hard to tell the difference between bait and an overextension. Damn, Afraid I mean, to get punished again. Uh, understandably that... so, but they've got to make a play at some point. Oh, this is the Deso Bear. Matsu just straight up tanking it so the bear doesn't have to stop swinging. Yeah, that's going to be a quick rush. Uncontested. I don't even know if VP Prodigy are aware. Are scanning. Uh, definitely not. They scan bottom. The what a bounty. So, Matu gets himself a second life. Alright, downsides, no PKBs. Upsides, there's no 4-staff yet onto Zai. 
So he doesn't have a save potential if they can get onto him. There's a glimmer on Poppy. Radiance Middle Tower is uh, and then they have to worry about Blink Yules on Misha. That part's gonna be annoying as Save is just playing the Vanguard here for DM. It doesn't even work though. They're gonna get He's him done. and the Bodyguard. Great hook oh, shot from Yapsor. TP out. There's a Yule Scepter. They've still got him. This is gonna be an easy two for nil. Rough stuff for Virtus Pro Prodigy. Poppy. You don't have Leptic. He's gonna start lurking. Look, he's warding on the other side. Oh. Chrono used defensively, and now Nisha gets here with the blink. Boy, does have another time walk, but Global comes out. Oh my god, Nisha he doesn't know that the Yules. The, trees. the Yules was on cooldown. He could have lived. Ah, he's still gonna live. And TP's out. Alright. Well, Global for Chrono. At least they trade cooldowns, and at least the Void lives, but. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Purely defensive plays. This is uh, getting really tough for Virtus Pro. They're falling farther and farther behind now, Trent. It's 90% uh, in Secret's favor, according to Dota Plus right now. And usually Dota Plus is pretty darn biased towards Faceless Void. True. Likes the purple heroes. Like those really does. winners, you know? And that Moon Shard's coming, so Matu's also about to hit a big power spike. Radiant Jungle, Mars Arena comes down, they have found Zai. Puppy also but perhaps in trouble, but a defensive decrep, that'll save Zai and they'll leave Puppy high and dry. He buys back now. Man, he Creep is from not Pro. squishy. He has 700 more HP than Mars. Oh, is Mars in trouble here? I think DM might still get out, another decrep hits, Zai comes in, oh! Hookshot hits defensively. They'll still get the kill. Yeah, he just didn't want Yasuo to steal his kill. That's all that was. That was ah, intentional. Zai doesn't make mistakes, you see. Well, save. Also died. If you blink, you missed it. It's funny how in some games, Ench looks so tanky when you have all these right clickers, and then against the magic damage of somebody like Pugna, she is just food. I love Ench, but not able to do a lot this game. Now sure. that moon shards out, the pug is here. They forced the glyph. No chrono for another 35 seconds. Global is back though. Void split pushing up top. Secret playing this very patiently. They still have the global. So, and they still don't have BKBs. Although I thought the kid, uh, yeah, he's yeah. almost on the Manta, so. He he just abandoned ship. He's like, BKB is not going to be enough. I need some damage too. Manta's a little bit more of a hybrid item. Oh, well, unfortunately, he kind of needed BKB though because of the curse, right? Oh, yeah. And one dispel is not enough. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Mars still very far away, and Viper, he actually wants Hooded Defiance. Radiant are scanning. And now Secret, able to just choke the map. You know, they're playing this position where if they get kills, great. If they don't, they know they're out farming Virtus Pro Prodigy, pushing all the lanes in, stealing all the neutrals. Not a huge amount of pressure on the Dire right now, though they do still have the Aegis for another 50 seconds, and might try to make use of that. Now, if they manage to throw a high ground push, though, we could find another game where Puppy finds a heart, you know? Hey, that's true. He's getting some, some decent gold. He's got the Philosopher's Stone. Get this man a heart. Oh, hook shot. Close range. Connects on two. Follow up. Global. They're not going to have enough damage to kill the Void, but the bear is here. They need another silence. Yule Scepter as DM jumps in. Very nice ultimate. Nisha stunned up, and he'll fall. First casualty of this fight, now the turn on to DM. Saves already fallen, and they will make it a one for two. Yeah, couldn't find, like, the... Everything hitting, right? The Chrono and the Arena, they, they can't get it all in sync. They didn't waste the Chrono, though, so... No, true. And Nisha was a pretty valuable kill, ends up being an even gold exchange, actually slightly favoring Burns Pro Prodigy. And that's the Aegis gone now as Matsu gets one step closer to his Skullbasher. I'm just seeing him 
trap the silencer, and then Zai pops Essence Ring and has 2200 HP, and then he just stands there and wails into you with pure damage. And it's just like, who's trapped in with who, man? Yes, he looks pretty comfortable in there for the most part. Up to 20 int now. Puppy <laughs> denies the OVs, nice. <laughs> little things, right? Hell yeah. Well, actually, those things give up things when you're losing. It's even better when you're winning. So those things give a pretty big bounty. That's recovery gold, man. It's probably worth more than saves life. That's uh, that's Willow's blink dagger right there. Chrono does connect on the Matsu. Do they have the damage to make this work? Definitely not. Pugged on the outside, heals him up as GPK gets turned on. Now Void has to run defensively. Save is going to stand his ground and fall. A two for nil, but it was Virtus Pro that were the aggressors. And now that Chrono's on cooldown with Global coming up in 20 Radiance seconds. Middle tower is under attack. They have so many just uh, straight up annoying spells to play around. Between the the fear from the bear, the Radiant save from the Pugna via Decrep or the heal, this AoE curse, and then you always Radiant's have to be freaked out of the clockwork but coming from some random angle. Yep. Viper down for another 15 seconds. High ground we go. No glyph for the Radiant, so the bear is going to shred through this. First crown actually does connect on the Zai. No follow-up though. Save walks in, has to walk out immediately. Bear pressing forward. Nice fear. DM hook shotted. Low. Puppy jumps in and actually gets the freeze on to save with a nice ulti. DM and save both buy back as the global flies. And puppy TP's home. Now you have some more valuable though. Out. Nice spear. Spear from the Willow will stop Misha from any kind of save. And Zai, no four staff. Another 15 seconds on cooldown, but a great savage roar. Oh, they got him. The spear. Nice spear, and now Zai's going to be stuck. Yep, Epileptic Kid's on him. Pops the Mask of Madness, and he's going down. So a little punishment. They get right. to tier three. Virtus Pro Prodigy hold, but they do have to use a couple of buybacks. Who did the gold go to, though? Uh, Virtus Pro Prodigy. Yeah, oh. but no, I mean, like, what heroes? This will come in handy. Uh, yeah, Viper, mostly. You got 500, Mars got 275. Still a pretty solid lead here for Secret, but... I mean, again, you have to just give credit to Secret with these damn heroes. Like, they have, like, four support heroes and a, a lone druid, basically. You know, these are... <laughs> obviously, now Pogda, we get the Radiant core quite a bit, too, but it's just, like, so many squishy heroes, and yet they're still yeah. so confident in their maneuvers. I mean, look at Nisha. I mean, he's died a couple of times, but he's also picked up so many kills that it feels worth it for him to play this aggressive and keep Virtus Pro Prodigy stuck on their side of the map. And they're making a silly amount of space for this lone druid. Lil is lurking with the Veil and level 2 Bedlam. But they, they don't like it. They don't know how many heroes are there. And the hook shot was close enough that probably wasn't going to be a very good play. 20 to 10. 12k net worth favor. Secrets game to lose right now. Hey, this bear is just so scary. The BKB, 10 seconds still sitting on it. Some nice value items on Virtus Pro Prodigy. Uh, they've got the Blink Glimmer Cape on Mars. They do have the Blink Veil now on Willow. Piper's got Atos, Halberd, Pipe of Insight. It looks like they want to smoke. Yeah, they're putting down some sentries trying to cover things. Not sure if it was spotted. Matu looks like he's trying to pop a smoke. Positioning behind the tree line, the bear sitting right there. Although he's playing like they have a four staff to save him. I mean, I guess his eyes here now, so. There's a glimmer cape on Puppy also. It's kind of awkward. Virtus Pro Prodigy hesitating. DM uses the glimmer cape to try and initiate. They see Matu. There's the arena. They hit him with a spear, but he's so tanky. He's already gotten off the true form, and instead the bear is just going to lay into him. Global silence as the hook shot comes in from Yapsor. Cogs on two, and he'll force staff out. GK now stuck a bit far forward. Puppy loses his ultimate, but the first casualty of war will be GPK. Now they're going to find the Mars. I don't think DM's surviving this one. Doesn't even have enough manta, or enough mana, rather, to use that glimmer cape. Two cores dead, no buyback. Still, Chrono available. They just can't get a win this game, man. <laughs> like, how long do they just camp that stupid bounty rune at 30 minutes?
Matsu just knows that the fight's going to occur, but with all the heroes nearby and the global to cover him, like he knows he's just going to be completely fine. I think Secret are apt at reading. Like, there's only a couple plays Virtus Pro can make right now. They'll kill Save again on the low ground, but one of them is going to be smoke into the triangle and try to take it back for the rune. So Matsu with perfect positioning, true form at the ready. Now high ground we go. Three heroes sidelined again. No buyback. Not even Save has it. The Viper will respawn, but too late to save the mid barracks. Radiant's middle barracks has fallen. Oh, just the first one to fall here, as uh, the Roche is ready to be claimed by Secret. They want to back up to it with the bear. Pretty cool idea from Zai. He's got Refresher queued up next, so a true double global. But then he'll also be able to do double AoE last word, which is a just an insane amount of silence. Didn't it used to disarm at one point? Am I crazy? It totally did, right? I'm pretty sure there was a point where it did. Yeah. I don't that, remember how long really ago. busted. <laughs> it's been a hot minute. Oh, very easy Roche taken here. Uh, Aegis yep. again on Matu, Cheese on Zai. And Zai has the spider oh. legs, which is a fantastic item for this place. And a double scary. damage rune, Trent. Maybe the most important of all. He's going to park the bear over here. They're going to wait until they're ready to go. And then they are going to push. There it is. El Doge, he's got the DD. They're going to find one here. It is Puppy. They dust him up through the Glimmer Cape. First Puppy's round. Like, okay, I'm taking your base. Yeah, we'll call that bait. Uh, no Radiant Glyph. And top barracks evaporate under the double damage. Meanwhile, back mid. Yapstor still playing with Virtus Pro Prodigy. Save on the run. He's going to get bursted down again. And now GPK, he's also going to be in big trouble. There is just no fight here for Virtus Pro Prodigy. That's two sidelined again. They've already they, used. Oh, that was the puppy buyback. This is no damage, man. Like they just got nothing. They got they, arena. They could chrono. It doesn't matter. Zai is spider in his way up here. He's an arachnid. Freeze onto the void. I mean, let's at least use one chrono. There's the BKB. He gets stunned. Epileptic Kid has to time walk defensively. I think you're right. I don't think the Chrono changes that much, but it's still a shame to see a team with a faceless void not be able to use Chrono Sphere to do anything throughout the entire mid game. He cast like, two defensive Chronos. I think so. Like every the time they one? tried to smoke and use Chrono, it looked too dicey, and they would just back up, or somebody would get caught, and Void would say, "All right, this isn't the fight. I'm gonna go back to farming." That happened you know, three times in a row. The only ones I really remember were the defensive chrono up top and bottom in terms of just like, all right, I'm just going to try and get out on my hero and keep split pushing. But, uh, I mean, you're right. They did try those smokes, but it's another case of Secret just like knowing what they need to do so clearly to win this game and just not handing it to them. Like, they needed that kill yeah. lane to go well with the Myers and the Dark Willow. They match it up with the Lone Druid. Um, they gave a lot of help early there, too, either from... Uh, from Yapsor or Poppy, mostly Poppy to start. And then once it's clear that the Lone Druid's going to be fine, Poppy rotates down bottom, creates a super uneven situation that they then are able to leave with both the Crystal Maiden and the Clockwork moving out of that lane, and Zai just camps the tower the whole time with the wave and becomes this humongous beast of a right-clicker. Yeah. No, absolutely. They read this game perfectly. And as you pointed out, Nisha, the way 